peppers. This first part is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna do all of them with you. I just want you to understand that you have to do the distribution. So you go in and you drop the alleles into the square. And you always list the dominant allele first because the law of dominance states that as long as you have one dominant allele, one capital letter, that's going to be physically expressed. So those are pretty self-explanatory. Here's where I wanted to walk y'all through this. So it's clearly saying that short is dominant. So it's going to be categorized by the letter S, capital S. And long hair is going to be recessive. So that's your lowercase. I, I stated that if you have a letter that looks exactly like it's lowercase, I hate that. So here's what I do. I put little dashes on top of my lowercase letters. The reason being is that, guess what? Now when I put them in my Punnett square, I know if it's a capital letter or if it's a lowercase letter. You'll see this in like some decks of cards where like the nine and the six will have a little line. Y'all know what I'm talking about so that you can tell the difference between them. So it's telling you you're crossing a heterozygous with a homozygous recessive. So the law of segregation tells you that you must put one parent on this side and the other on this side. And I know that my little dashes are telling me that these are going to be lowercase. You go ahead and you drop your alleles. And now you have all of your probabilities. So if I'm asked to give how many are gonna have short hair? Well, here I have two that are gonna have short hair. Or you could even say two out of four, which equals to 50%. Where it asks about long hair, all I need is one of these dominant alleles. There it is, there it is. So I'm gonna have two or two out of four that are going to be long hair. Easy enough? Yes. Okay, so y'all are still like Miss Gosh, this is pretty self-explanatory. But here's where kids are getting thrown off. Here is your key. This is what you're going to use to answer the next three questions. There's a couple of things I want you to consider. You are only going to be told the trait. So I want you, before you start doing anything else, I want you to tell me the genotypes. So homo means what? Same. 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 If it's long hair and long hair is a capital letter, what do we know about long hair? It's dominant. So homozygous long hair is going to be both dominant alleles. Both are going to be capital letters. Then we're going to cross it with a short hair. Short is recessive. In order for a recessive trait to be expressed, both alleles must be present. I can't put a capital letter because if I did, then that would now be expressed due to the law of dominance. Does that make sense? So in order for a recessive trait to show up, they both must be recessive. So now that you know your two genotypes that you're crossing for the parents, you use your law of segregation. One parent goes on the left, the other parent goes across the top, and we distribute our allele frequencies to come up with our uh, possible offspring. It is asking you to write a ratio. So here's what you do for genotype. Genotype is going to be the Genetic makeup. So these are going to be the letters. Phenotype is the physical appearance. So these are going to be words that we're going to use to describe. So what are my possibilities here? Do I have many possibilities for genotypes or are they all the same? So I'm going to put four out of zero, because we're writing in ratio, are going to be heterozygous, one of each. In phenotypes, we are going to write, we're going to have four out of zero, because every single square has one dominant allele, and these are all going to be what? Long or short? Long. Long. Easy enough? Yes. Okay, good. So now let's do the two in the back before you guys kind of go off and do your homework. So heterozygous spotted. Spotted is going to be represented by the letter capital T because spotted is dominant, right? 
So if I have heterozygous, I have to have one of each. Remember I said always write your parent's genotype before you start missing, messing with that Punnett square. So now that we know that genotype, we cross it with homozygous spotted. Once again, spotted is dominant or recessive? Dominant, because look, it was represented with a capital letter. So spotted is dominant. And since it's homozygous, they both have to be capital letters because they have to be the same. Okay, so now that you use your, you have your two genotypes, you use your law of segregation, you put one parent on the left, the other parent across the top, and you distribute your alleles. Now genotypes, what am I going to write? And these are going to be homozygous dominant. Or I could have two out of two that are heterozygous. So you have to list every single possibility in your Punnett square. And you're always having to equal to four. Okay, so then do I have to do two out of two for spotted? No. I have at least one capital letter in every single square. Therefore, what are they going to look like? Spotted. They're going to be spotted because the law of dominance states I only need one capital letter to do the trick. So I'm going to put four, zero, spotted. We're still okay with this? Beautiful. The ratios throw everyone off. Just know that your ratios can only equal to the number of squares you have available. So they always have to equal to how many? Four. Four. All right, so now let's do this heterozygous black crossed with a white. Our key tells us that black is dominant and white is recessive. So if I have heterozygous black, I'm going to have what? One of each, right? One dominant, one recessive. If I cross it with white, in order for the recessive trait to be expressed, what must happen? Both of them have to be present. So I'm going to have two recessive alleles. Now that I have my two genotypes for my parents, I can use my law of segregation to put them on the top and on the left. I always list the dominant allele first because the law of dominance tells you that that's going to be the one expressed. And now I can go through and write my genotypes. So I'm going to say what? Two R. So what this says, guys, is that two R heterozygous, two are not. Two R homozygous recessive, two are not. My phenotypes, I'm going to have two different ones. So I'm going to have two that are what? Black, and we're going to have two that are white. Okay, so this seems like it's super easy, right? Mm -hmm. Here's where the kids are messing up. They'll get themselves one like this. So when you are distributing, I think it's this one. Thank you. So when you guys are, you get something like this, if you do on the homework, just know that you'll have to write all the three possible ratios. So for genotype, you would say you have one that is homozygous dominant, you have two that are heterozygous, and you have one that is homozygous recessive. Does that make sense? You would have, for your, so this would be your genotype for that? Your phenotype for that one would be that I have three that are whatever R is and one that is not. So like let's say R stood for round. So I would have three that are round and one that is 
squared or whatever trait they're having you explore. So just because your ratios and genotypes are one thing, that doesn't mean that in phenotypes they'll be exactly the same because of that law of dominance. We're good with it? Okay.